Hey everybody, Ryan with Fluid Health and Fitness today talking about a common issue that a lot of us experience, this knee valgum issue that goes on when we're moving. Ultimately this leads to a whole host of muscle imbalances or injury patterns that start to show up. And what we want to draw your attention to is beyond the local relationships at each individual joint segment, but how the center of mass plays into it. And specifically so for this foot dropping in or again, more of that pronation eversion at the ankle. A lot of times we see that with reduced mobility at the ankle. We see this show up with, again, additional strain on the fascia of the foot. Sometimes it leads to bunions, again, on the inside, on that first tarsal or fifth tarsal. Again, as the foot spreads and flattens out and pushes out into your toes or into your shoes. But ultimately, that could be an issue of strength at the foot, mobility at the ankle, the knee tracking irregularly inward, or big picture globally, where is our center of mass? So ultimately what we want you to be aware of is that if we just address the segments of the strength or mobility deficits of the limb or extremity, we may not be doing or looking at the big picture. So ultimately what we're trying to get through today is the understanding that how you maintain your center of gravity and how the over rotation of the hip can actually lead to moment or again, torsion into those segments leading to the accessory motion hypermobility and then the overuse of those uh, areas and then trauma. So today we're gonna give you a couple exercises that you can do working on the contralateral sides, the opposite side stability. So when we think about loading into that limb, a lot of times it's just that hemisphere that we think about, but we're not thinking about the control or the eccentric relationship on the opposite side of the body. And if we're doing that, it could lead to poor outcomes if we're trying to fix the side that we're experiencing issues with. So again, today we're gonna to work on internal oblique on the opposite side. We're gonna work on gluteal control on the opposite side so that when we step into that appendage, we don't over rotate because we have a loss of control on the load bearing mechanics on the opposite side. So follow along with these videos. We help or hope that this helps you. If you have questions on any of the topics, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. And again, think global, not local. Your body's designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you soon. Hey everybody, Ryan with Fluid Health and Fitness. Today showing you how to do a sideline um, oblique crunch or internal oblique crunch. This is a combination of spinal flexion and lateral spinal flexion. You would see this movement in, in load or non-load bearing suspension of the hip. So you're teaching the body how to control the diaphragm as you would lift and suspend the limb um, forward. So this is at a limb advancement movement. So it's gonna be targeting the internal oblique. I'm gonna use a soft round ball. This is about a five inch ball. You can use a foam roller or a foam ball or a rolled up mat or rolled up towel. Again, whatever you uh, need to get, again, a diameter of about six inches, five to six inches. You're going to place it between your thighs, and I'm using this as a wedge to, again, push into adduction on this left side. We're going to be demonstrating the exercise on the left side. That's typically the deficit. So again, I'm going to be laying on my right side, and I'm going to orient my hip so that it's slightly diagonal. So I'm not directly on my right hip. I'm not sidelined directly. I'm diagonally oriented. My right arm is out, slightly extended. I'm going to support my head on my left side. Now again, the goal here is to compress between the pelvis and the rib, pulling the pelvis under posteriorly with my abdominal force. I'm going to compress laterally by drawing my elbow in towards my knee, and then I'm going to breathe in at the top of the movement so that I can get expansion out of my T-spine. So it's going to look like this on the back lateral side. Breathe out. Get all the air out for six. Pause for two seconds. Breathe in, open up, and then reset. So we would breathe out on the effort. All the air out for six seconds. Pause for two, breathe in, open up, holding the abdominal tension. Breathe out, six seconds. Squeeze the groin in, bring the elbow to the knee, both flexion and lateral flexion. Hold two seconds, breathe in, come on down. So again, you can see that I'm flexing my spine and I'm laterally flexing my spine, both of which are going to isolate my internal oblique 
And again, at the top of that compression, I'm breathing in so that I can improve my zone of apposition or again, the leveraging of the rib down so I can get the full contraction of the diaphragm. Questions on this movement, reach out to us, admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. All right, hi everybody, Ryan with Fluid Health and Fitness. Today showing you how to do a side-lying hip extension with external rotation focus. Uh, you're going to see us doing these types of exercises with a couple different pieces of equipment. We might ask you to do it with a knee band to focus on abduction tension. Uh, you might have a, a towel to drag your, your heel across the wall to create some friction uh, so you can get better hip extension. Or we might even add a hamstring pullback by putting a, a band around your heel. So just know that there's ways to modify this exercise to include or integrate other uh, muscle groups as part of our our way of progressing you. So I'm going to show you a couple variations of this exercise today to cover the whole gamut. But know the primary focus for this drill is to focus on the hip extensor and external rotators. And primarily that's going to be your glute max. So to get into position, what you're going to do is lay on your right side. We're going to use this exercise towel to basically put behind our heel. Notice that the wall I'm on is a plexiglass wall. So it gives me some ability to slide. If you're at home and doing this, it might be a little bit more troublesome. If you have a, a friction, a lot of times people will do this on the couch, different things. But really the goal is to be able to move the, the heel up and down, which is going to rotate the surface of your quad up and down. And what that affords you is the ability to pivot the femoral head in and out into external and internal rotation within your socket. So that's the biggest key here. Sometimes people bring it up and down into abduction. That's not the, that's not the focus. The focus is the ability to pivot and externally rotate the femur within the socket. So that's the driving influence. Now, as usual, we always wanna set up from proximal to distal. Again, thinking about global mechanics before we start working on isolated patterns. So you're gonna get into this position, focusing on getting your hips tucked under by crunching under, getting all the air out. You're going to pre-contract the glute to stabilize the proximals. You can pull back your heel by bending at the knee to create some tension through the hamstring. And then you're going to finish with the auxiliary movement, which is this pivoting down. So again, I'm dragging my heel downward towards the floor. It doesn't mean the whole leg is moving. It means that I'm moving, again, independently, creating a little bit of a drag. Now make sure as you do that, that you don't lose the proximal stability or fixation of the pelvis. You're trying to keep that hip socket stable and move the femur independently within the socket to truly isolate and target those external rotators and specifically the glute max. Now again, I can add a knee band to this to drape around my knees to add a little bit of abduction tension. You'd normally see that more on the right side than the left. Not always, but a lot of times. Or I could put a hamstring uh, tension on this by putting a band around my heel, pulling my heel down, making me have to pull back against it into more hamstring tension. So those are modifiers to this exercise. And again, we might ask you to do that as you improve your awareness and we start to work into different planes of motion and coordination in those planes. So again, set up would be breathing all the air out to maintain fixation of the pelvis, pre-contract the glute to stabilize the femur in the socket, and then pull back on the heel and drag inward with the heel to isolate the external rotators and the hamstring. Any questions on anything we went over today, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. But there you go, guys. Get after it.